Hey students, welcome back to Buddy. Let's review chapter 23 notes before we start chapter 24. So we know that the setting starts off in the apartment and then Daddy and Little T go and visit New Orleans. Little T can't get Buddy off of his mind. Grandpa T says, I ain't going. Comes a time when you got to let go. Daddy and Little T visit New Orleans and observe the destruction. And they notice that their house was checked with an X by rescuers on September 12, 2005. And on the bottom of the X reads, one dog. So we know that Buddy was found, okay? And then there was external conflict, which was resolved. And that's that, okay? So they're going to go back to New Orleans to the house in chapter 24. And then they will return to the apartment in Mississippi. Um, get ready. It's some chapter. We try to push open the front door. It won't budge. Daddy kicks it as hard as he can. It's still won't budge. It swole up, he says. He steps over to the window, opening onto the porch. He's got to be careful of the gap between the porch and house. He takes off his t-shirt and wraps it around his hand. He taps on the glass and breaks it just enough to undo the lock. But when he tries to lift the window, it won't budge either. Finally, he just breaks out all the glass. He's careful to get all the pointy pieces out. He drops them in the hole between the house and the porch. Then he calls him. Sweet Jesus, he says, and I come in after him. This is the living room. Mama's sofa is upside down on top of the turned over table. The curtains are pulled off the wall. One set is laying in a heap in the corner. Another set is draped over the TV, which is laying on its back beside the stand it used to be on. The stand is broke to pieces and flat out on the floor. The floor is covered in mud. The rug has floated up and made wrinkles of itself. Underneath the rug, the wood flooring strips are buckled and popping up, and some of them have floated off and got caught in a tangle with the sofa. Clothes from Grandpa T's bedroom are stuck on the floor. A hat is laying upside down by the window. A doll is sitting inside like she's riding in a boat. The house stinks and black stuff is growing everywhere. So you've got mold and you've got mildew and the house smells and everything is upside down and inside out. Just a mess, ruined, done, gone, right? So black stuff is growing everywhere on the cushions and furniture, on the walls and on the ceiling. When daddy looks up, he almost laughs. The blades of the ceiling fan are hanging straight down like they melted. They got soaking wet, and now they're just drooping down like a dying flower. I don't even smile when I see it. I'm too busy trying to step over all the stuff. I'm too busy trying to make my way to the stairs. The stairs ain't, ain't safe. When they got wet, they buckled and broke. The rail fell off. For extra careful climbing. Up. We press up against the wall where the wallpaper is peeling off in strips. We're in the hall. We can see there was water on the floor. Okay, so in the second floor, and they could see that there's water on the floor. So the water rose that high. The carpet looks like black bread. And there's the bathroom. The door is standing wide open. There are scratches all over it. 
The water in the tub is halfway down and black with scum. Food is scattered everywhere. It smells even worse than the rest of the house with Buddy's business piled up in one corner. But it don't take even one second to see that Buddy himself ain't in that bathroom no more. Buddy himself is gone. We're standing there just staring when Daddy sees a piece of paper by the sink. He picks it up. It's a note, he says. I look too. It's so old, the ink is faded away. All we can see of the phone number is 1-800 and then in the middle, a three. I ball up the paper in my hand. He's gone, I say, but he's still alive somewhere, Daddy says. Probably, we just don't know where. He puts his hand on my shoulder. That's got to be enough. It ain't enough. It ain't even close, but I don't say nothing. I just pull out a trash bag and get to work. We have planned to fill up the trash bags with trash, but there's so much of it, there ain't any point. So we look for stuff we can keep. We fill up the bags with clothes. We get our own pillows. We get some toys from baby Terrell's crib. Daddy gets some dolls for Tanya, even though I say she has plenty already. I grab up her ballerina skirt and those red shoes. They're still laying on the bed from that day when we were packing. Daddy's shifting around in his closet when he says, oh my God. And I go running in there to see what's wrong. He's standing there holding a white box. You know what this is, he says. I shake my head. I shake my head. It's my mama's wedding dress. Okay, so that's Grandpa T's wife, right? That's the wedding dress. That's little T's grandmother's wedding dress. Okay, that's in the box. I look at Daddy. His eyes are full up with water. So his eyes are full up with water. So Daddy's beginning to cry. Don't cry, Daddy, I say. And then he sits down in the middle of the floor and starts heaving like a little girl. I go over and stand next to him. I put my hand on the top of his head. I'm standing there looking out the window and thinking how round his head is and wondering what am I going to do if he can't stop? What am I going to do if he can't never stop? So little T's wondering, he's never seen his dad cry. And now his dad is crying a lot and he's trying to, you know, he has his hand on his dad's head and he's not just sure like how to help his dad, but he's, he's with his dad, right? And then he stops. He rubs the water out of his eyes and shakes his head and says, sorry. He stands up real fast and starts putting clothes in a bag, like it ain't never happened. And I figured that's best. It don't change nothing, so it ain't never happened. We throw five bags of clothes and toys in the back of the man's truck when he comes by to pick us up. It's almost six o'clock. We have to hurry. Now, remember the mayor said that if you return to New Orleans, you have to leave by six, okay? We have to hurry. We're barreling out of town, and I remember I left that note in the bathroom. It's just as well. I can't read it anyway. Who left that note in the bathroom? Why, why was there a note in the bathroom? Think about that, students. Buddy's not in there. The bathroom was a mess. We know that rescuers came to the house. We know they found one dog. And then there's a faded note with half of a phone number. Hmm, think about that. But they can't read the phone number. We pull up to the apartment that's in Mississippi. They're back in Mississippi in the dark. The man helps daddy lift the bags out of the truck. 
were saying goodbye and thank you. And Mama and Tanya come running out the front door. They're hugging us and kissing us like we're just back from the war or something. Mama's got fried chicken and lots of tea. I realize I'm about to starve. We carry the bags in and we're all talking. I'm telling about Buddy and the fan and Daddy saying about the wedding dress, but not the part where he cried. Tanya is pulling her clothes out of the bag and hugging all those dolls. Grandpa T comes wandering in like he's been taking a nap, even though it's night. He sits on the sofa and listens to all the jabber. After a while, he tilts back his head and goes to his place. Daddy's telling about how the water filled up the whole downstairs. He's telling Mama about how the kitchen cabinets fell off the walls and the sofa is sitting on top of the table and the refrigerator floated into Grandpa T's bedroom. Sorry, Daddy, he says to Grandpa T. We couldn't save anything out of your room. Everything downstairs is ruined. Grandpa T don't even move when Daddy says that. He just stays in that place he likes to go. Daddy looks at Mama. Mama looks at Daddy. Daddy steps over to Grandpa T. He touches his shoulder. Daddy, he says, Daddy? Grandpa T don't move. I'm watching him while Tanya shakes a toy at baby Chavelle. I'm watching him, and then I know Grandpa T ain't never going to move again. He's gone to his secret place, and he ain't never coming back. Okay, so Grandpa T passes away. I mean, we know that he was getting older and he was on medication, um, but really also the stress of all this and the hurricane in New Orleans and the house and just Grandpa T was getting tired, right? And uh, he stayed alive long enough to hear news about the house and then he just closed his eyes and, and passed away. I want you to think about how this is going to affect little T. And think about how Grandpa was little T's friend, his advocate, the person who would listen to him. I'm giving you hints, okay? So this is the advantage to listening to my chapters. <laughs> Let's go to chapter 24 notes. The setting, right? We go to the house in New Orleans to take a look and back to Mississippi. Little T and Daddy walk through the house. The house is a mess. It smells and there's black stuff growing everywhere. Buddy is gone. A note with a faded phone number is left by the sink. Daddy finds Mama's wedding dress and gets sentimental, starts crying. And little T comforts him. Little T and Daddy return to the apartment with bags of items they recovered from the house. Grandpa T passes away. Here's a quote. I'm watching him and then I know Grandpa T ain't never going to move again. He's gone to a secret place and he ain't never coming back. Here's the stop and shot. How may Grandpa T's passing affect little T? Support your thoughts using at least one example from the text or what you know about their relationship. How is little T going to be affected, okay? by Grandpa T's passing, okay? So I will see you all at the Zoom meeting. I will show you pictures of mold um, and other items that they found in the house, all right? And um, then I'll also see you when I record chapter 25. Bye.